Today on the caucus, Jennifer Steinhauer on a chaotic situation on Capitol Hill with an unclear path forward. Also, reporters in Arizona and Massachusetts talk to voters about how the gridlock is seen outside the Beltway. I'm not losing sleep uh, yet. What's clear now is that any solution to avoid default must be bipartisan. The legislative action on the Hill sort of bled from Thursday night right into Friday morning, less than 12 hours after Speaker John Boehner was forced to pull his bill from the House floor because he did not have the votes for passage. Majority Leader Harry Reid announced in the Senate that the Senate would go ahead with its own bill. Mr. Reid said this was the last train leaving the station on the floor of the Senate Friday morning. The question is, Will today's Republicans break away from the shrill voice of the Tea Party and return to the Republican Party of Ronald Reagan? So what has to happen now is that the Senate and the, and the House have got to come to some type of agreement, whether it's through actual bipartisan legislation or whether, as some people believe may be happening behind the scenes, the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid and the Minority Republican Leader Mitch McConnell secretly work out, or perhaps not so secretly, work out a deal. And today I urge Democrats and Republicans in the Senate to find common ground on a plan they can get support uh, that can get support from both parties in the House. Well, all the focus has been on the White House and understandably John Boehner. The key player here actually may be Mitch McConnell, who is probably best capable of working with his colleague Harry Reid and Mr. Boehner to bridge some type of gap between them to come up with a bill that would be both palatable to the conservatives on the House side, but also something he can get through with the Democrats in the Senate and that the White House would brook. It's not an easy task, but it's not an impossible task, and many people on the Hill think that, that the chips may lay with him. Lawmakers should be working a solution to the crisis, not a blocking strategy. Even if senators work out something today, Friday, on Capitol Hill, any type of series of votes would likely begin Saturday night into the witching hour Sunday, perhaps Monday, and even Tuesday before any final legislation is passed. There are plenty of ways out of this mess, but we are almost out of time. Abby Goodenough and Mark Lacey visited ideologically divergent districts in Massachusetts and Arizona. They found differing political views, but an agreement about the dysfunction of Washington. So how are you feeling right now about the whole thing? I'm feeling frustrated. I went to Barney Frank's district, which is the fourth congressional district of Massachusetts, um, notable at least in the immediate suburbs of Boston for being pretty wealthy and quite liberal. We went to Coolidge Corner, which is a really busy, bustling retail section of Brookline. People are shopping at Trader Joe's, and almost everybody, but I won't say everybody, was a Democrat. But generally, these were people who were very fired up against the Republicans in Congress over this debt fight, and very convinced that the answer to this problem, the deficit problem, is raising taxes on the rich. We live in a pretty wealthy area here. Uh, a lot of people around here have money, and I talk to a lot of people who tell me that they wouldn't get mine. They wouldn't mind if they got taxed. Tax increases have to be a part of, uh, of the solution. I went to Arizona's 5th Congressional District, and the view there was very different. It's a conservative place, but most of all, it's a very independent-minded place. I went out to a golf course. It was triple digits, and these were serious golfers. Although I heard a lot of criticism of the president, the frustration that exists out here in Arizona is much broader than that. Nobody wants taxes raised uh, that I came across. Nobody wants that. But there is a sense that they want a deal. They want Washington to function. Right now I'm wondering if there's anybody in the White House, Congress, that has an answer to this. The people I talked to were also willing and even eager to blame Democrats as well as Republicans. Absolutely for absurd. Politics should be thrown aside and, and uh, the, these issues that have existed for some time need to be resolved. Well, all of these elected officials were sent to Washington to do the nation's business and there's a lot of frustration that that's not getting done. What we're talking about is a budget. We're not talking politics, we're just talking mathematics. What do I think is going to happen? Yeah. I really don't know. <laughs>